Hello, my name is Kip Snow and I am Director for Transportation Distribution and Maritime Logistics at the Community College of Baltimore County. I have the pleasure of bringing to you the remarkable story of Ruckert Terminals, one of the largest private, family-owned marine terminals on the East Coast that has thrived for the past 100 years. Ruckert Terminal's success is centered on a resilient culture of customer centricity, hard work, perseverance, forward thinking, and adaptability that started in Baltimore in 1921. With an $800 loan to purchase a moving van and rent a stable, the Ruckert family began their operations specializing in moving household goods and transformed it into a multi-million dollar family-owned marine terminal in the heart of the Port of Baltimore. What would become Ruckert Terminals came into existence against the backdrop of the Roaring Twenties, the jazz age with Louis Armstrong and Bessie Smith, movies and movie stars like Charlie Chaplin's Tramp, Douglas Fairbanks, Rudolph Valentino, and the Marx Brothers. Baltimore's own Babe Ruth hitting home runs, Houdini's famous escaping acts, and the unpopularity of Prohibition in a city where many breweries existed. The story of Ruckert Terminal starts with Captain W.G.N. Ruckert, the first of four generations to serve the Port of Baltimore. His early career started as a clerk at Jackson's Wharf Station of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and then a stock clerk at Terminal Warehouse in Fells Point. By the time that World War I broke out, he had been promoted to manager at Terminal Warehouse and was drafted by the U.S. Army. The U.S. Army used his experience at Camp Hollabird's Colgate Storage Warehouses in Baltimore for the war movement. During his military tenure, he was promoted to the level of captain, which is how he earned the nickname Cap. The industry and military experience provided him the opportunity to learn the importance and mechanics of logistics, managing labor, and the transporting, handling, and storing of needed and desired supplies in an efficient manner. He was in charge of the U.S. government's vast storage terminals and managed 1,200 personnel. This experience gave Cap the additional knowledge and confidence needed to start his own business. He adapted military organization and techniques to what would become a growing business of handling import and export world commerce. Cap didn't start Rucker Terminals on the waterfront. He started the family business with his brother, George, in a warehouse at 820 George Street near his childhood home. The brothers settled on the company name of Atlas Safe Deposit and Storage Company, which they had painted on the side of their new Federal Motor truck. This truck brand was similar to other trucks of the time period, much like the ones used by McCormick and Company. The brothers also advertised in the Baltimore Sun to solicit for employees and promote the business. When you move, why not move with dignity and in such a manner that can only reflect credibility to your standing in your new neighborhood? After four years of success, they had outgrown their initial facilities and built their first new warehouse at 2126 Edmondson Avenue. Even though this facility was many blocks from the waterfront, this did not stop Cap from researching and following up on potential opportunities. Atlas's next break came with a shipment of potash from France, which began the next chapter in the family's successful business history. 